Hello, second grade scientists, and welcome to another science lesson. We have learned so much about how our earth changes, quickly or slowly, through wind, water, ice, weathering, erosion, so many topics. Well, today we're putting it all together to see if we can decide how we can maybe prevent some of these effects of wind and water. How can we prevent erosion from wind and water? Now, before we try to prevent it, let's remind ourselves what weathering and erosion are. Well, what is erosion? Erosion is the movement of soil and sediments from one area to another. As we see in our animation, weathering breaks and erosion takes. So we see that the, the rain, excuse me, is breaking off little pieces of this rock. The wind is blowing it away is breaking it down and then of course they're getting washed away by wind and water. So that movement of the sediment to new areas is our erosion. And one very common way that we see that in our world is through landslides. And so we want to know how can we prevent erosion to protect homes and communities? Because landslides and mudslides are a very real part of life here in California. I don't know if you've seen any of the pictures of Big Sur in the past had a huge landslide. And if you're not quite sure what a landslide looks like, let's take a look. This video is an animation of how a landslide can happen. So you see a hillside, it's kind of steep. Lots of rain. And then, uh-oh. Oh no. The rain soaked down into the soil. The road is being destroyed. The land is being washed away by all that water that soaked into the ground. And the result is a mess. Our land has changed and caused quite a bit of destruction. Since landslides and mudslides are such a part of California, <clears throat> We want to know what are things we can do to help prevent a landslide from happening. So I want you to pause the video and turn and talk to someone at home. What do you think can prevent erosion from a landslide? Is there something you could make? Or is there something you know about that might prevent something from happening? Pause the video and turn and talk. If you're back, hopefully you've had some time to brainstorm some ideas how either you personally or people can prevent erosion from a landslide or ways that erosion can be prevented. Doug from Mystery Science has some ideas. I love Doug from Mystery Science and we don't have time to do his whole activity about this, but we are gonna watch a video and see what Doug thinks about how we can prevent erosion from a landslide. So let's Take a look. Why would landslides happen more often after there's been a wildfire? Well, it turns out plants are really important for stopping erosion caused by rain. For one, the leaves on the trees catch the raindrops so that when the rain drips off the leaves, it hits the ground more softly than if there were no trees there. That means less land gets picked up and moved by the rain. That's less erosion. But even just the small plants and dead leaves on the ground help because they soak up some of the rainwater. That means less water that washes downhill. Plus, underneath the ground, all of these plants have roots that grow into the soil. That actually helps keep the soil in place. You can see in this close-up picture of plants' roots that there are so many different roots going in every direction. It looks like a tangled mess, but that tangle of roots holds on tight, both to each other and to the soil, which keeps the soil from eroding or washing away. So now you can imagine why wildfires make landslides worse. Wildfires burn up all the plants in an area and leave behind only ashes. When there are no plants, erosion happens much more quickly. There are no trees or bushes to protect the hill with their leaves, so raindrops hit the ground much harder. 
there are no small plants or grass to soak the rainwater up. So water starts rushing down the hill. And there are no roots to hold the soil in place any longer. So after a heavy rain, water loosens up the soil and easily washes the land away. It's a landslide. Landslides are a problem, especially for people who live in steep areas. We don't want landslides to wash people's houses away. And we don't want rocks and soil to slide down onto roads where people are driving. So what can we do? How can we stop landslides from happening? One thing we definitely could do is help plants to grow back after a wildfire. But that will take a long time because plants grow pretty slowly. Is there something we could do right now to stop erosion? Is there anything that would work like plants do to protect hills from getting washed away? What do you think? And friends, yes, you could think about this. How could you stop erosion from happening? Is there anything that would work like plants do to protect hills from getting washed away? If you have some time, you can always try to engineer your own solution to this sort of a problem. Unfortunately, we're not going to do that today. We're going to look at a different scenario, but I want you to think about what Doug had to say. The importance of plants and things on the ground that really can help prevent erosion from happening. And you're going to take that information and we're going to look at a different kind of scenario, related but a little different. You should have a worksheet with the same information, but let's go over it together. June's parents are planning to purchase land to build a house. The pictures below are maps of the two properties they are choosing between. They want the house to be sturdy for a long time. They want to choose the property that has the least amount of erosion from wind and water. Which property should June's parents choose? How do you know? So we have this map of property A, and we have this map of property B. Using our map key, we see that those green circles are trees, the smaller brown circles are rocks, and the blue wavy line is the water. So on property A, we have a couple trees and some rocks, lots of water by where they want to build their house. On property B, we have all these trees, lots of rocks right by the water where they want to build their house. So here is your activity for today. You're gonna come up with a scientific explanation. Here is our worksheet. Here is your prompt to write a scientific explanation describing which property June's parents should choose. And there are two parts to our explanation today. You're going to make a claim and then provide evidence for why you think your claim is correct. A claim is basically an answer to the question. Our question is, which property should June's parents buy? So your claim should say, June's parents should buy, and you tell me, property A or property B. For your evidence, I want you to provide two or more reasons based on these maps why you think what you think, why you made your claim. So let's say you make a claim that they should buy property A. Then you need to give me two pieces of evidence. What is it on this map that makes you think that this property has less erosion or will have less erosion? If you choose property B, take a look. What is it on this map that makes you think that? Think back to that video we watched with Doug from Mystery Science and think back to everything you know about weathering and erosion. All right, my friends, now is the time to give it a go. You're gonna finish up this worksheet and you can always share it with people at home or you can share it with your teacher when you see them next. Excellent work today, second grade scientists. We are now changing land experts. I can't wait to hear what you had to say. Until the next science lesson, stay curious, second grade scientists.